Total War Troy approaches, and with it a whole bunch of new factions and units to learn. Recently I got my hands on a battle demo where we got to play as Achilles of Thea and Hector of Troy. In this video we're going to go through all the units in that battle and see what Total War Troy has to offer. These are only the units that were in the battle demo and aren't all of the units in the factions. We'll begin with Thea. Starting off with the big man Achilles. He is an epic hero which is like your lord or general and he is a big damage dealer in the melee, specifically when taking on other heroes. He's got a lot of weapon damage which is armor piercing and has a bonus versus heroes. Heroes in Troy come with a variety of abilities as well, making them unique from one another. For Achilles he has Terrify which reduces nearby enemy melee defense and morale. He also has Blood of Heracles which will provide him Rage when activated. Rage is used to activate any other ability, so it basically allows you to use all of his other abilities in a pinch. He also has Cleave which will increase his melee attack and weapon damage for a short time. Ares' Rage which will increase his weapon damage by 150%, make him unbreakable and send him berserk. So he'll do a lot of damage but he'll be uncontrollable for a while. And Divine Challenge which will allow him to force another hero to duel with him. So kind of giving them a death sentence potentially because he is very good at that. Especially if you time the use of his abilities really well. He also like all heroes has an Aristia ability which is a one time use ultimate ability type of thing which will give him armor, melee attack, freeze his vigor, make him unbreakable and give him no cooldowns. So pretty powerful if used in the right moment. He's also immune to psychology, can hide in the forest and has a 15% missile resistance. So overall a very powerful duelist type hero who will be great at taking out enemy heroes. Now onto some light infantry and we're going to do this in weight class order as weight is very important in Troy. So all the light units first beginning with light swordsman. Not actually that light as they do have 45 armor on so that's something and they do have a shield which blocks 40% of missiles so that's going to help them stay alive and also gives them a nice bit of melee defense as well. Their weapon damage is fairly low as Troy damages go judging by what all the other units have and if you're wondering what the little symbol next to damage means it says reduced attack interval next to it which seems to be on all units for some reason. I'm not sure if this is just a demo thing or a bug but I don't think it'll be there on the final game because it doesn't make much sense. So if you see that symbol and don't hear me say anything about it, it's probably because it's reduced attack interval again. They also have a pretty big unit size at 120 which is bigger than a lot of the other units and seem to have fairly low morale. You can see there's a bit of a red mark on there, a debuff, but that's just part of the difficulty modifier for the battle demo. So they seem like they could be a good little chaff infantry, good for taking on other cheap infantry or chasing down archers. And then we have Aeginian Runners. Very similar to the Light Swordsman with more morale and a fair bit quicker at 55 speed so even better for flanking. They also come with a missile attack in the form of javelins which they can fire whilst moving and like all light units they can hide in the new terrain type tall grass which only light units can do as well as the forest. So a similar role to the Light Swordsman just a bit better with that missile attack available they've still got a shield as well. Better morale, better speed, better weapon damage so just an improved version of the Light Swordsman really. Onto Thessalian Marines, a two handed spear infantry who are a charger which means they're best at charging in and then pulling away, cycle charging basically, rather than staying in prolonged combat. They don't have a ton of armor or melee defense so that charging, constant charging is really going to help them out. They have fairly decent weapon damage and a bonus versus large and not to mention they have stalk so they are invisible until they get close so perfect for flanking of course. Especially as they have the flanking attack improved ability which increases the bonus effects they get when attacking units in the side or back. So a nice sneaky flanking unit with anti-large options. On to javelin throwers, no prizes for guessing what they're good for. They are a skirmish unit, not really any armor, not really any melee skills, they are all about lobbing that javelin in people's faces. They are armor piercing javelins as well so good for throwing in the backs of your heavily armored enemies. Don't throw it in the front if they've got a shield because a good chance they'll block it. Shields are very powerful in Troy. A good little skirmish flanking unit for all your high damage short ranged needs. On to some medium troops now with the adventurously named Spearmen. They are very much your cheap spearman unit however they're not anti-large necessarily. They actually have a bonus versus swordsman and a bonus versus axeman. So better at fighting infantry surprisingly, assuming that that's not a bug or just wrong in the demo. 
So overall just seemed like a bit of an expendable unit really, good for tying up some infantry or acting as roadblocks. They are listed as a frontline unit but how well they do that job I'm not sure, they don't have a lot of armour, they do have a pretty big unit size actually at 120 again. So yeah, could have a few purposes but not going to be fantastic at any job they do. Pelagic Thessalians next, kind of similar to the other Thessalian unit we just looked at, a fast flanker that has stalk, a bonus versus large, the same abilities as that other unit, they're just superior in their combat stats, so more armor, more morale, same speed, more melee attack, more melee defense, more charge bonus, and this will make them better at surviving in melee for prolonged periods, unlike their cheaper counterpart. Then we've got Spear Fighting Myrmidons. Now we're moving up to some big boys. These are a medium infantry still. Great armor, great morale, a bit slower than the lighter units as you might expect. Great melee attack and defense, nice weapon damage, which has a bonus versus swordsman, bonus versus axeman, and a bonus versus large. So they are not messing about. They also have a javelin ranged attack, which is armor piercing. And it doesn't end there. They can switch their weapon mode to two-hand their spear, making them much better damage dealers at the expense of their defenses. They also have flanking defense improved, which means anyone who attacks them from the side or back won't get as big a bonus as they normally would. They're also unbreakable, immune to psychology, can hide in the forest and can fire whilst moving. Oh, and their shield blocks 65% of missiles, so good luck killing them. And to go with them, we have Myrmidon Swordsman. A similar sort of deal, but less versatility, maybe. More weapon damage and higher melee attack makes them a better damage dealer overall. Still got the ranged attack and the big block chance shield. And they are experts at flanking, because they have the immune to flanking ability, which removes all bonuses from anyone attacking them from any direction. So even if they go and flank someone, they don't really have to worry too much if someone comes up behind them, they'll be able to fight them just fine although not exactly a good position to be in. Either way, a good strong unit that could be a frontline or a flanker, good for taking on other infantry. To our first and only chariot in this video, which is a medium chariot, very much what you might expect. Great for charging around, running things down, doesn't want to stay in melee too long with low melee defense and armor, and there are 12 of them in a unit. So lots of power to slam into infantry, although they do have a bonus versus large as they are a spear chariot. So they can take on other chariots or maybe cavalry, but honestly it's hard to gauge them without having any other chariots to compare them to. Now we move on to our heavy troops, beginning with Theon Spears, who are not actually that heavy armor wise. So I'm not sure what it is exactly that categorizes them as heavy. Maybe it's their ridiculous and impractical hats. But either way, they are a heavy unit. Kind of similar to the regular spearmen we saw earlier, just much better at the job. An anti-large unit, got great melee defense, could be a great holding front line as well, much better than those regular cheaper spears. They also can change between two-handing their spear and having spear and shield, so they've got that extra damage option if they want it. A nice sturdy strong spear option. If you want the sturdiest and beefiest of front lines though, you'll take the champions of Thea. Lots of armor and morale, great melee defense, tons of melee attack, even more tons of damage. They also have some flanking defense, so they'll reduce the bonuses of anyone who flanks them, and they are unbreakable. Not sure why some of these units have morale amounts that aren't just straight up 100 to show that they're unbreakable, but they are unbreakable. So a very tough frontline unit. They're a bit slower at 37 speed than most other infantry, so flanking is not really going to be on the cards for them. A fantastic anvil though to hold enemy units in place while the more maneuverable units in the army flank around. And the last infantry we have for Achilles, renowned Theon Spears. A big 120 unit size with tons of health, lots of armor, great morale but very slow at only 28 speed, good melee attack, even better melee defense, tons of weapon damage, bonuses versus axemen, swordsmen and large, resistance to fatigue and the ability to switch to two-handing their spear for more damage, so an absolute monster of a unit. Pretty much just an improved version of those regular Theon spears. Not much use for flanking though with 28 speed, so they will be a frontline unit primarily, or as a protector for your flanks as they're so heavy, they'll do well at stopping cavalry and chariots. And finally, Savage Centaur Warriors. These are a mythical unit, obviously playing on the mythology of centaurs, half horse, half man. These are just tribal looking men on horses, just like any other cavalry in a total war. But in Troy, there isn't a lot of cavalry. There's only these few mythical options. They've got decent damage and a nice charge bonus. Not a ton of melee defense though, so don't want to hang around in combat for too long. They are very much a shock cavalry. 
going to be great for running down the archers and skirmishers, as well as hammering the backs of enemy front lines for that hammer and anvil. So a mythical and rare unit in Troy, you're going to have to use it well if you want to make the most of them. So there it is, the Theon army under Achilles, at least what we had in the demo. Like I said, not all units in the faction are going to be in this battle, so there's many we haven't seen. But from this we can see that the faction has a lot of different options, a lot of variety. Plenty of light troops, some medium troops, some heavy troops. Overall, maybe perhaps being a more versatile and maneuverable army than some other ones might be. You could have the option to bring a small powerful army or a large one full of cheap units to overrun and hoard the enemy. So keep that in mind as we look at Hector's army next and you can see the difference in the units which will reflect the overall army potential playstyle. Now to Hector of Troy, another epic hero. Honestly, very similar stats to Achilles, a bit less damage and charge bonus, but he does have considerably more health than Achilles. Also has the bonus versus heroes. For his abilities, he has Divine Focus, which will increase his weapon damage and his attack interval, making him attack faster, which of course means more damage. He also has Herculean Resolve which makes him unbreakable and immortal, which I assume means he can't die for the duration, which is 120 seconds, but it doesn't clearly say what exactly immortal does, but I guess that's probably it. He also has Favor of Asclepius, which is a healing ability to himself and nearby friendly troops. And then a buff to nearby allies with The Shout, which increases weapon damage, morale and melee attack of himself and nearby units. And also Vanquish for himself and his allies, increases speed, armor piercing damage and charge bonus. He also has the same Aristia ability as Achilles. He also can hide in the forest, is immune to psychology and has a 15% missile resistance, not to mention his shield blocking a ton as well. So different from Achilles in that he's not all about taking out heroes, but more about supporting his army and surviving and being more tanky himself. And to another mythical creature with the Minotaur. This mighty beast is a savage damage dealer with tons of weapon damage, a big charge bonus, lots of melee attack, armor piercing as well. Not so good in the defenses, low melee defense, low armor, so by no means invincible, but he's going to be very powerful at taking down all kinds of infantry. He also has two abilities, one called Bull Rush, which will charge him through front lines, smashing everything in the way, and also the Savage Roar ability, which will reduce enemy morale by a quite considerable 30 for 40 seconds. He can also hide in the forest, causes fear, and is a siege attacker. So a brute of a unit that could cause problems wherever he goes on the battlefield. Now to the only light unit in Hector's army in this demo, Archers. They are what you might expect, pretty rubbish in the melee, all about that ranged attack of course, got some decent range on them at 140, not great missile damage, but again nothing really to compare it to in terms of archers, only javelins, which are of course very different. So it did give Hector the advantage in this battle because he had the extra range option, whereas Achilles only had the javelins. On to the medium infantry then, with spear fighters. These are very much the cheap and cheerful spearmen for Hector's army. I would ignore the traits at the top of the unit card for this one as apparently they're a charger, have a slow battle speed and have good attack. Well they don't have any of those. They've got some of the lowest attack stats, they have 48 speed so by no means slow and they have melee defense so they don't need to cycle charge necessarily maybe. But either way, a cheap anti-large unit for Hector. And then to some elite boys in the medium category, Hector's Chosen. These boys mean some serious business with good attack stats all across the board, lots of high weapon damage, very fast on their feet at 55 speed, lots of armor, lots of morale, everything else. So overall a very strong unit. They also have flanking attack improved which means they get better bonuses when flanking enemy units, they are immune to flanking themselves and they encourage so they'll give extra morale to nearby friendly units. A very powerful unit especially when working on the flanks. Now to the heavy units, beginning with renowned swordsmen. A big unit size, decent combat stats, nothing amazing but fairly decent. A massive shield that's going to block a good percentage of incoming missiles. Overall, making them a good mid-tier type frontline unit. It does say on their unit card that they have a special missile weapon, but they don't. On to the heaviest of the heavy boys with heavy Trojan spearmen. These boys mean some serious holding business. Decent armor, morale, melee defense, okay weapon damage. They can switch their weapon, put their shield on their back and two hand that spear for some extra damage if they want to. But if they do want to have their shield out, they will gain a 75% missile block chance, which is absolutely huge and makes them basically pointless to shoot at from the front. 
They've also got all the bonuses versus Swordsman versus Large, etc. So a very powerful unit overall, a good sturdy holding front line or protector of your flanks. And then we have Trojan Defenders, who are a bit of a weird unit. I can't quite figure them out in all honesty. Club and Shield Infantry. They have a ton of weapon damage, but they don't have a ton of melee attack on rather lots of melee defense. So it's like they're a damage dealer, but their melee defense and melee attack says otherwise. Also very slow on their feet. So maybe more of a damage dealer front line that can kind of survive okay. Maybe most of the melee defense is coming from that shield they have, but perhaps more of a damage dealer than anything else, but they've got some decent survivability. Going to be interesting to get some more play with these and try to understand exactly what their role is supposed to be. And lastly for Hector, the Champions of Troy. These are like the heavy Trojan spearmen on steroids. They've got 100 armor, that big ass shield, lots of melee defense, good damage as well with the bonuses, a bit of a charge bonus as well. They are not messing around. They are just absolute tanks with great defense and are going to be the ultimate front line. They are basically iron breakers. Again, on the unit card, it says they have a special missile weapon, but we can't actually see any missile weapon stats. Do remember that this is pre-release stuff though, so still a couple of months out. These little unit card mistakes are probably just bugs and things that haven't been sorted out and polished yet. That's all. For their abilities, they can two-hand their spear, which I should mention also gives them a defense on their back when you put the shield back there, because look at the size of it. That is going to protect the back pretty damn well. They also have immunity to flanking, immunity to psychology, and will encourage nearby friendly units. So a very powerful top tier infantry for Hector. So that is all the units Hector had in his army in the demo we got to play. As you can see, thinking back to Achilles and how he had a large variety of different units of light troops, medium, bit of heavy, while old Hector here has lots of big heavy troops, lots of heavy spearmen, good frontline units, not a great deal of fast flanking maneuverable units. The only light unit in his army in this demo was the archers, so nothing massively fast, meaning his faction is going to have to adopt more of a defensive kind of playstyle rather than an aggressive outmaneuvering one like Achilles. So a nice difference between the two factions in terms of playstyle. Hopefully they can find ways to make the other six factions a little bit different from these two as well, so we get some nice faction variety going on. So there you go, Achilles of Thea, Hector of Troy, two very different armies but of equal strength. Personally, overall, I found the Troy battles to be pretty damn fun, more fun than I was perhaps expecting. I am looking forward to the game, if I can get past it being on Epic of course, but let me know how you feel about Troy and seeing all these units. Does it look like enough variety? Does it excite you for Troy? Let me know in the comments, because I do read them all even if I don't reply to them, I do pretty much read all of them. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this, I will see you in the future.